Hey guys and welcome back. I'm sure a ton of you guys have noticed that there are so many new products coming out right now and the reason for that is because the makeup world tends to work just like the fashion industry where it's always a season ahead. So right now we're in winter um, here in the US. So right now a ton of makeup brands are coming out with their spring collections and rather than wait a while and slowly incorporate new products into my videos, I decided I would throw a bunch of them into this video so you guys don't have to wait to see them. And these are a bunch of products that I have tried and like. Um, a lot of them have been sent to me, just so you guys know, because I know you guys like to know that information. I did decide to revolve this entire look around the NARS Spring Collection because of all the luxury brands, or any brand in general, I just feel like NARS does spring really well because they always do really pretty neutrals with the perfect pops of color to go with spring. So this is the look I came up with using those colors as well as a ton of other new items. So be prepared to see a lot of newness in this video. And if you're interested and want to see how I create this look, just keep on watching. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a small amount of the Velvet Matte Skin Tint from NARS around my brows before filling them in. I always like doing this because it prevents me from later messing up my brows when applying my foundation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and buff this into that area with a Zoeva 102 brush. This product is like their tinted moisturizer, but it finishes matte. So for those of you who are always concerned about using a tinted moisturizer or have seen me use it and were like, I can't use that, I'm so oily, this is going to be a great option for you guys. It also has an SPF 30. And I'm using the shade Gronlin, but I think I'm also going to be mixing in a little bit of St. Moritz to bring back some warmth to my skin because I feel like this one's a little neutral and it's going to take down my color a bit. I'm going to lightly dust some of my Shine Free Loose Powder from Maybelline onto my brows to help prevent any slip. This just kind of sets that foundation before applying my brow product. I'm using a Smith 112 brush to dust it onto the brow area. Don't worry if the brows look like they have product on them or if they look dusty because later on with brow gel and combing in them, um, combing through them with a brush, it'll go away. The first new product I'm going to be using is the Brow Power Super Skinny Eyebrow Pencil from IT Cosmetics. This is very comparable to the Brow Wiz from Anastasia. It's in the shade Universal Medium Brown. That's one thing I like about these brow pencils is that they all come in like universal brown, universal taupe, universal auburn, so they can match a variety of hair colors. To prime my eyes, I'm gonna be using the Benefit Air Patrol Primer. I really like that this primer has like a slight yellow tint, so it really brightens up my eyes, especially when I have a little pigmentation on my lids. Um, it also dries down to a really thin, just kind of transparent layer on the lids so it doesn't feel heavy and it does have a, more of that silicone feel. And then rather than apply it with the applicator, I like to pick it up with my finger and then blend it out so that way I don't use too much. Using my Sigma E40 blending brush, I'm going to dust some of my Maybelline loose powder from my brow bone down to the crease, but I'm not going to apply it to the lid. So the first color I'm going to be using from the NARS Spring Collection is called Kari or Kari, it's spelled K-A-R-I. It's like a dusty rose color. And I'm going to pack that onto my lid and then blend it up towards the crease and really buff it out. And I'm gonna do that using a Sigma E25 brush. And the reason I'm using the Sigma E25 brush is because it is synthetic and I'm going to later wet this brush to intensify this color on the lid. If I were to use a natural hair brush, I would ruin the brush. So I might as well just stick with one that does it all. So now again, I'm gonna pick up that same shadow onto the Sigma E25 brush, but this time I'm gonna spritz it with some water and then pack it onto the lid. The beauty about these dual intensity shadows is that they're meant to be wet, so you can literally get them soaked and they'll go back to their original formula. You're not going to ruin them. And you can see the difference in the crease. It's dry, on the lid it's wet. It just adds like a nice metallic sheen. Totally changes the shadow. I really love these guys. It's like a two in one or three in one because sometimes I'll even use them as a cake liner, which is awesome. 
To blend up the shadow, I'm actually going to be using Hamamit, which is also part of the spring collection from NARS. I'm going to dip my Smith 232 brush into the left side of the shadow, just a tiny bit, and then use that to blend out the edges of this shadow. And I'm starting by applying the color towards the front of the eye, and then blending it back because that's where I want the most color to be. And I'm also going to be using the right side of this shadow and applying it towards the inner corner of the eye as well. I'm almost doing sort of like a reverse ombre eye where all the color is in the center and it diffuses outward versus all the color being on that outside of the eye and then going inward. I feel like the eyes need a little added something, so I'm going to be doing a soft winged liner with eyeshadow. I'm going to be using Corrupt from Makeup Geek and a Delium 763 brush. I'm not sure if this is meant to be like an eyebrow brush, but I'm going to use it anyway. And I'm going to line up the edge of my business card against my eye and then create that soft wing. And from here, I'm not really sure what else I want to do with the eyes, especially the lower lash line. I don't know if I want to fill in my entire waterline with black liner. So I'm going to stop here and work on the complexion while I decide what to do with the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and prime my skin first. I'm going to be using a really hydrating primer because I am going to be using the Velvet Matte Skin Tint and my skin is more towards the dry side. So I just need to make sure that it's super hydrated if I am going to be wearing a matte product. So for that reason, I'm using the Natasha Denona Hydrating Under Base. I really like this guy. It feels more like a moisturizer than an actual primer. Now I'm just going to go ahead and apply the Velvet Matte Skin Tint with my fingers. I'm using the shade Groundland and a little bit of St. Moritz. So I just smear it, as my friend Lacey says, all over my face. And then blend it out with a beauty blender. And I'm actually also going to cover up my lips with this foundation because I'm going to be using a nude lip and my natural lip color likes to turn everything brassy and I hate that. And I really like the finish of this product. It's not overly matte and dry and cakey looking. This one has a really natural finish. You can see it even has like a slight sheen to it. So it actually looks like skin. I really like it for those of you who are oily and have never found a good tinted moisturizer type of product. This one's going to be one for you guys for sure. For concealer, I'm going to be using Bye Bye Under Eye from IT Cosmetics. I know this isn't new, but it's new to me because I just recently got it. And it reminds me a lot of the Tarte Maracuja Creases Concealer. I think I have it here. To me, they have the same consistency. So I like to warm it up between my fingers. And then run it back and forth underneath my eyes in order to just kind of break down the product and really have it glide on and look super natural. And I take it all the way back to cover up my sunspots. Mm. And I know it looks like a lot, but I use my beauty blender, which I feel like soaks up a majority of the product. Oh, and the color I use is neutral medium or yeah, neutral medium. And I actually feel like the velvet matte skin tint does a really good job at setting itself because it is more towards the matte side. So I'm only going to be setting the areas of my face where I applied concealer with some powder. I'm using that same Shine Free Powder from Maybelline and a damp beauty blender. And now that I've set with powder, I'm actually going to go back and finish the eyes. I'm going to start by just applying Kari, the first shadow I used along the lower lash line, but more towards the outer edge using a Morphe M213. I don't want to blow it out or smoke it out a lot. I just want to keep it really close to the lash line to create almost like a doe-eyed effect. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the left side of the duo eyeshadow to just buff out the lower lash line. This shadow doesn't add much color, it's more of a great blending color. So I'm actually taking it on a large Sigma E40 brush and just kind of buffing out the lower lash line. I decided I am going to tight line, but just towards the outer edge. I don't want to take it in right here because it might transfer. Um, and I don't really have eyeliner there, so I'm just going to tuck it in under here. So towards the outer part of the eye. And I'm using the Ico Making Eyes Gel Liner in Pitch Black. I'm going to be applying my new favorite mascara, which is the Superhero Mascara from IT Cosmetics. This guy will seriously bring out lashes you thought you never had. It's so amazing. Um, 
I'm going to amp it up, but I think I'm also going to apply some false lashes. So this is just one side with the mascara. You can tell it just kind of amps up the lashes. It doesn't look chunky or like spider legs. It just does a really good job at lengthening them and making them look fuller. I did get mascara on my shadow, but I'm gonna show you guys a trick to take it off. I see you guys asking that question a lot. So I'm gonna let that mascara that I got on my shadow dry and then I'll show you guys in a bit how to remove it without taking off your eyeshadow. So while I let that mascara on my shadow dry, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some false lashes. I'm gonna be using Lash in the City by Velour Lashes. All right, I went ahead and applied the lashes off camera to save some time. So now I'm gonna take a clean blending brush, preferably one that's a little more stiff. This one's the Smith 230 brush, and it's completely clean, and all I'm gonna do is flake off the mascara. Mascara doesn't like to stick to shadow or powder, so it should come off unless it's like an extremely waterproof mascara. Um, and if you get like a big blob, do more of a like a scraping motion like this, but you'll see it just comes right off and I'll get closer so you guys can see. And it's gone. So that's all you have to do and then just blend your shadow back out. Now I'm just gonna add some brow gel and mascara to my lower lashes before moving on to the rest of the skin. This is the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. And I'm gonna use that same IT Cosmetics mascara on the lower lashes. I really like the brush, however, I don't really know if it's going to transfer underneath my eyes. I mean, most likely it will because my lower lashes are so long that every mascara does that, but I'll report back, maybe like in my next tutorial, on how it works on the lower lashes. For bronzer, I'm not gonna be using anything new. I'm gonna be using my Pro Bronze Fusion from Makeup Forever in shade 20M and a Smith 112 brush. I really like that this velvet matte skin tint sort of set itself because it can go right in with bronzer. I don't have to add any more powder. For a highlight, I'm gonna be using one of the highlighters from the new Glow Kits by Anastasia. The blue one is called Gleam and this one is more towards the pink side. So I might use this one to go with this look and make it a little more monochromatic. And then the one in the pink palette is called That Glow. These guys are more of your typical neutral gold beige highlighters. So I think I'm gonna skip out on these even though these will be like my everyday highlighters. I'm gonna use a Starburst from the Gleam palette. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering how these compare to the illuminators from Anastasia and I would say these seem to be a little more finely milled. The other ones, I don't know, I love the finish of the other ones. You can't even tell they're not textured or chunky. These are like your typical highlighter. Um, I haven't decided which ones I like more or whatnot. Uh, I went a little intense with the highlight there. I'll tone it down in a bit. I'm also gonna take that Smith 230 brush and apply this highlighter to the inner corners of my eyes. And for blush, I'm gonna be using another NARS Spring 2016 color. This is Impassioned. It's a perfect taupey pink. You guys know I like really soft blushes. I don't like intense blushes, so this guy's perfect. And I'm applying it with my Sigma. <gasps> oh my God, I almost dropped my new blush. I think it's F05. Now to tone down the highlighter and make it look very well blended. I'm gonna grab a large fluffy brush. This is the Sigma F20 brush and I'm just gonna buff it across my entire face. Really lightly, you're not pressing too hard. It's just going to soften the look of the blush, the bronzer, the highlight, especially right here where I put a little too much and make it look more blended. And for the lips, I'm gonna keep them really soft. I'm gonna outline them and fill them in first with Oh Honey Lip Liner from MAC. And I'm gonna finish it off with Instant Crash Lip Gloss from NARS, also a part of the Spring Collection. All right guys, that completes this look. Before I head out, I just wanna give you a little NARS inside scoop coming from someone who has freelanced for the brand. Just so you guys know, the boutiques get everything two weeks prior to anywhere else. So if you love NARS or you just love being the first to have a product, hit up the boutiques specifically the NARS Marlowe's Boutique because that is the one that I freelanced out of and they would love it if you told them I sent you there. 
I'm not getting any sort of commission or any sort of benefit from sending you guys there. I'm just saying they're super helpful there. They will literally stay on the phone with you till they have answered all your questions down to finding your foundation match. So give them a call. Um, you can even email them if you're international and they'll seriously take care of you. I will include all their information down in the description box below. Another thing I want to let you guys know is that if you're in the industry, such as a makeup artist, an actor, actress, model, hairdresser, esthetician, um, what else? If you do nails, there are a ton of discounts available to you at NARS. A lot of people, I'm surprised, don't know about the NARS Pro program. I mean, that is how I have been able to purchase all of my NARS products because if not, I know they're super pricey. So if you're in the industry, definitely look into the program before you make a purchase because you can get anywhere from like 25% off to 40% off. So definitely go and check that out online or when you call, you can ask them some more questions about how to enroll in that program. So with that being said, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. So I see you in the next one. Bye guys.